Hello, my name is John Nichols. Uh, I'm almost 82 years old. In three weeks, I'll be 82 years old. I've been writing my whole life. And I just published a book. It's called I Got Mine. And it is about all the books that I've published during my lifetime. It's a fascinating read if you have good spectacles. And uh, it's got a lot of pictures and everything in it, um, including some of my uh, drawings and calaveras and stuff. That's the film director, Costa Gavras. And uh, this is um, one, one, of, one of my drawings. I used to do a lot of calaveras and everything. And so the book is filled with just fascinating drawings that will have you just amazed at the talent I used to have as a uh, artist, too. So anyway, this book, I Got Mine, is all about all the books I've written in my life and all the movies that I've worked on for the last, count them, 57 years, I think, 56 or 57. Okay, so let me show you the books that I've written over the last 58 years. The first book I published is called The Sterile Cuckoo, published by David McKay. They bought it when I was 23 years old, and um, it's the most successful novel I ever wrote. They gave me a $1,000 advance, but the book got turned into a movie directed by Alan Pakula, and it starred Liza Minnelli, who got an Oscar nomination for her role in the movie. The second novel I published was called The Wizard of Loneliness. The Wizard of Loneliness is about an orphan kid spending the last year of World War II in upstate Vermont. It was actually made into a movie also, released in 1988, and uh, it starred Lucas Haas when he was a famous child actor, and also Leah Thompson, uh, who was a great actress, and uh, John Randolph. Number three, the third book I wrote uh, by that time, it was, it's called The Milagro Beanfield War. And um, I didn't publish it until 1974, which was a nine year interval between uh, The Wizard of Loneliness. And The Milagro Beanfield War is about a bunch of people in a small town in northern New Mexico who uh, go to war against developers in order to stop their little town from being destroyed. It also was made into a movie um, that was released in 1988. The movie was produced by Moctezuma Esparza. It was directed by Robert Redford. It starred actors like Freddie Fender and Sonia Braga from Brazil. And it's been an albatross around my neck ever since the movie came out in 1988. The fourth novel that I published, this is the second in my New Mexico trilogy. First one was the Milagro Beanfield War, was The Magic Journey. The Magic Journey is a long novel about how capitalism works in the United States of America in a small town in upstate New Mexico. And uh, basically I wrote it. I was a Marxist-Leninist. I wanted to overthrow the capitalist system. I still do. And if you want to know how to do it, read this book, The Magic Journey. You'll have a wonderful time. Okay. The third book in my New Mexico trilogy was called The Nirvana Blues. The Nirvana Blues is a vicious satire on the future of what has happened to the United States, the planet, and northern New Mexico in the last 15, 20, 25 years. I certainly predicted what was going to happen nowadays. But um, this this book basically mocks everything from the zipless fuck to um, Hanuman worshippers, uh, etc. All the hooky-mooky stuff that started with the hippie migration to northern New Mexico. After that book, I published a little book called A Ghost in the Music. I wrote this book first. It's about um, America's uh, 
destruct self-destruction, about the self-destruction of positive energy in the United States. I wrote the first draft when my wife and I uh, rode, rode with a cousin of mine in his lobster boat. We, we took a load of liquor out to Monhegan Island off the coast of Maine. And the hero in this novel was named Bart Darling. I first wrote the book in uh, 1965, I think. And I finally published it in 1979. It went through an awful lot of drafts. Um, but I always had a hero named Bart Darling and he winds up as a film director in northern New Mexico, living in a house like the Mabel Lujan, the Mabel Dodge Lujan mansion, where Dennis Hopper made his uh, movie called The Last Movie. And it's sort of based a little bit on my involvement with Hopper and with making movies in northern New Mexico, in Taos. Anyway, so then... In uh, the mid-1980s, I wrote this book called On the Mesa. It's basically about uh, 50 acres of sagebrush land out in the West House Mesa and a little stock pond in the middle of that land. And it's about the life of all kinds of animals and birds and frogs and toads and wajalotes that lived in this little puddle of water. Uh, in the mid-1980s, I produced this novel, American Blood. Most people throw it against the wall on page four. This book is about the violence that underlies our culture in America. And uh, it's very brutal. It starts out with 35 pages of American atrocities in Vietnam. Then it returns to the United States and it just goes through everything that we've been going through lately, like school shootings, killing people in mass shootings in Buffalo, all that kind of stuff. This book is just filled with the violence that underlies our culture. Um, if you can get through it, you're a better man than I am and a better woman than I am. But currently, this book is on film option and might actually get made into a movie because apparently, although it was published in 1987, it's still very relevant today. But this is not a funny journey through uh, a novel like the Milagro Beanfield War. In 1990, I published this book. It's called The Sky's the Limit. This is my book, like uh, Al Gore's Uncertain Truth. It's a book with lots of photographs <clears throat> of the Taos Mesa. They're pretty beautiful photographs. They're all very lovely and simple. But there's an essay that goes throughout the book on the written part of the book, which is basically my prediction on what's going to happen to the world. And all of it has happened. Uh, this book starts out by saying that the 1980s were the hottest decade in American history. And of course, the hottest decades in American history now have been from 2010 to 2020. And um, so it the subtitle is A Defense of the Earth. And I published that book with W.W. W. Norton in New York City. The other books were published by David McKay, The Sterile Cuckoo, G.P. Putnam's Sons for uh, The Wizard of Loneliness. Then the rest of my books were published by Holt, Reinhardt, and Winston, or Holt, um, uh, Henry Holt and Company. This is another book about the environment with very simple photographs. Quotes Henry Thoreau a lot. And uh, it sank like a stone. It was so unsuccessful that W.W. W. Norton said, we are not going to do part three of your Defense of the Earth trilogy. And thank God for that. Uh, in, also in the 1990s, I published this little novel 
called An Elegy for September, which is a love, a love story between a 49-year-old guy and a 19-year-old um, girl. Mostly, they walk around up in the mountains uh, in Taos, out on the mesas in Taos, down in the Rio Grande Gorge in Taos. I wanted to just write a book about the month of September, which is very beautiful here in New Mexico. And, uh, but it read too much like uh, National Geographic. And finally, I made it a novel with a love affair at the center of it. And it kind of worked. It was actually almost successful. Uh, two years later, in, um, where are we, 1994, uh, Henry Holt published this book, Conjugal Bliss. Uh, Conjugal Bliss is a vicious satire about marriage. Everything that can go wrong in marriage is in this book. And what I thought I was doing was rewriting Tolstoy's book, The Kreutzer Sonata. In The Kreutzer Sonata, a guy gets onto a train, sits next to another guy, and he tells the other guy why he killed his wife. <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and he goes through this horror story about being married. So this is my horror story about being married. I've been married three times, and uh, thank God it wasn't more times because I wasn't very good at it. Um, okay, then the University of New Mexico Press published this book, Dancing on the Stones, which is a series of my articles and speeches and rum, uh, ruminations on how the world works and doesn't work. And speaking of the Milagro Beanfield War being turned into a movie directed by Robert Redford, I did write a long article uh, called Night of the Living Beanfield how an unsuccessful cult novel became an unsuccessful cult film in only 14 years, 11 nervous breakdowns, and $20 million. Believe me, that movie has been an albatross around my neck ever since. Then I wrote this book called The Voice of the Butterfly. Um, it took me, I think, 14 years I wanted to write a book about um, environmental Armageddon, but I wanted to write it like a Batman movie or an Avenger or a Marvel, you know, comic book uh, or adventure story. So I wanted it, the whole thing reads like Crazy Eddie selling used cars, you know, in a park. Like, Come on, step right up, folks. We got this car, it's twenty dollars off. You'll love it. It doesn't have a radiator, it doesn't have an alternator, it doesn't have anything else, but it'll be a great car for your garage. Okay, that's what this the spirit of this book is like that. And uh I'm very, very lucky to get it published by Chronicle Books in San Francisco. And it took me, I think, 14 years to write. It started out as a 1,300-page uh, novel, and I finally managed to cut it down to 270 pages. And those poor suckers actually bought it and published it, and I'm so grateful. One, one day I was doing a book signing for this book, and a guy came up to me and he said, his book club had been reading this novel, and he said, frankly, this is the worst novel I ever read in my life. He was very polite and asked me to sign the book. And I signed it. Thank you so much for reading the worst book I ever wrote. Then I wrote a little book called An American Child Supreme. It is simply an essay that I wrote about how in heck does a person in this country develop a social conscience. And that's what this book is about. This book is about when I was a child and um, first, like, first moved to Virginia when I was 12 years old, and there was complete Jim Crow, complete segregation, 
complete racism. And I was 12 years old, going to all white schools and uh, going to movie theaters where African-Americans could only sit up in the, what is it called, a balcony or something. And um, I was going to Herndon High School in Herndon, Virginia, Northern Virginia, in May 19, 1954, when Brown versus Board of Education passed. And uh, that was one of the steps in my slowly growing knowledge of what was really going on in this country. Uh, I had a, I've always had spells where I just haven't been able to produce books or it's taken me a long, long time to write a book. The Empanada Brotherhood is about a 21-year-old kid, 22-year-old kid. He wants to be a writer in New York City and um, lives in a little tenement, tiny tenement, and hangs out in an empanada stand with a lot of Argentine and Chilean and Bolivian friends. The empanada stand was located on McDougal Street just before it hits Bleecker Street. And I loved the people at that empanada stand. And I first wrote a copy of this book in 1966 and 67. Then I put it in a trunk for 30 years because it wasn't any good. I took it out of the trunk in 1997. I spent 10 more years working on this book. I had to literally try and reinvent the life that I had lived in New York City way, way back in the early 60s. And it's probably my favorite book of all time uh, because I finally managed to invent something that really spoke to my heart about the reality of what I went through during that time when I wanted so much to be, uh, be an artist. This book, On Top of Spoon Mountain, was published in 2012. I forget how old I was then, by the University of New Mexico Press. The book is about a 65-year-old guy who's way overweight and has a bad heart condition who wants to climb a 13,000-foot mountain with his grown-up children. Um, in a way to kind of figure out how to make up uh, his failure as a father with these kids. He, he thinks that climbing the mountain together will be some kind of uh, spiritual uh, getting together again. And I love this book. Um, and one of the things I love about it is that this character has a little eight-year-old granddaughter who is a real trip. And they like to sit in a car behind Michael's diner in Taos and watch ravens raiding the dumpsters for food. And uh, they both learn how to talk raven together. Anyway, I, I think that this is a wonderful book and I'm very, very, very grateful University of New Mexico for publishing it. A few years later, in, 2012, in 2016, University of New Mexico published this book, The Annual Big Arsenic Fishing Contest. I'm a fly fisherman. This book is about three idiot macho guys who have a contest every year on the Rio Grande River up by Big Arsenic uh, to see who will catch the most trout. For 19 of those 20 years, I always won the contest. And, um, but these three guys, they seem like idiots, one. They're really macho. They just talk the dozens to each other. They just insult each other all the time. And um, many people think, oh, this is, this is a fun book, a funny book about trout fishing but it's really a love story about three guys who um, really cared for each other, despite the fact that they never said a nice word to each other ever when they were competing on the Rio Grande.
This book, Goodbye Monique, is the only book I've self-published in my life. Uh, and it's about my mother, Monique Robert. She was French and she died when I was two years old. And then my father remarried and my stepmother literally whitewashed Monique out of my life. My father couldn't talk about her. And so I knew nothing about my mother until really after my father died, I went and got his archives, brought them to Taos. I spent three years reading through his archives uh, and learning a whole lot about Monique. And uh, many of my relatives in Europe sent me uh, letters, diaries, journals, photographs, etc. And it took me 20 years to write this little book. It started as like a 1300 page family saga, all about my European family, my American family. It finally wound up as a little book like Breakfast at Tiffany's that is just about the four years that my father and my mother had together from 1938 until she died in 1942 when she was 27 years old and I was two years old. This is a picture of Monique that was taken a couple of days before she married my dad in 1938 in Paris, France. And during my life, I've also published books with many photographs in them. If Mountains Die is a, a book, it's a memoir about my uh, first couple of years with my family, Ruby and, and Tanya and Luke in Taos, New Mexico. And it has photographs by my dear friend, Bill Davis. And this book, was very successful. It's funny, it was published by Alfred Knopf and uh, stayed in print for 40 years. And uh, it's uh, Bill Davis, my friend, the photographer, is the guy who convinced me to do the book. And I'm so glad that I did. I owe Bill for that. And Bill also ta taught me to be a photographer myself and to love photography. And this book, The Last Beautiful Days of Autumn, was published by Holt Reinhardt and Winston. It's uh, another memoir, another of my memoirs, and it's got my pictures in it, at the back of it, which is the first time, first time that I ever published pictures. This is my friend Mike Kimmel, and this is my friend um, Shel Hershorn who were big fishermen on the Rio Grande River. And uh, this was my idea of just what typified Taos, the raven on the fence post and the apples in the apple trees. Then, just before the movie of the Milagro Beanfield War came out, I published this book, A Fragile Beauty, with uh, Peregrine Smith in Utah. And... They wanted to publish it to coordinate it with release of the film. And I wanted to publish it just to have my photographs published. And uh, so in the end, it did get published. Did these pictures, just a rainbow in the Taos Mesa. And this other picture is my daughter, Tanya, and her best friend, Tanya Maris, just in a little field enjoying themselves growing up in Taos. And finally, in 2017, the University of New Mexico Press again published this book, My Heart Belongs to Nature. And this book is full of my photographs just about the landscape of Taos County and living here. I've lived here for 51 or 52 years now. And all the pictures in this book uh, are in Taos County. It's like I have climbed all the mountains in Taos County. I have, I have um, 
What was I gonna show here? Obviously, I'm not gonna. I have enjoyed really going up uh, into the Alpine country and following bighorn sheep. I just love the bighorn sheep. And um, it's, I was raised by naturalists. My father was a naturalist. My grandfather was a naturalist. And I'm an amateur naturalist. But I've never really traveled outside of Taos County. People always tell me, hey, let's go up to Colorado and fish the Colorado River, or let's go to Steamboat, or let's go to over to, to um, you, you know, Utah and fish the river there or something like that. And I said, why should I do that when I can jump in my truck, drive over to the high bridge like eight miles from Taos, go down rope trail onto the Rio Grande River and fish the most beautiful stretch of trout stream that you've ever seen in your life. So that pretty much is what this book is about. And if you don't like it, you can lump it. But it is a book about how I kind of created all those books and just as many books that I wrote, but never, ever published and wouldn't ever allow to be published. This book is uh, published by the University of New Mexico Press also. And um, it sums up in 200 and who knows how many pages, 269 pages, what I just told you in 15 minutes. And that's all, folks. Da, 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 that's all, folks. Oh, wait a minute. I just reminded. How did I get the title? I got mine. Well, I got it off a of Pink Anderson record. The record is called Medicine Show Man, and this is the way the song goes. I went to a crap game the other night. It certainly was against my will. I lost all the money I had except a greenback dollar bill. Forty dollar bet was lying on the floor. My buddy's point was nine. Then the police broke down that door. But I got mine, oh I did. Yeah, I got mine. Put it into my pocket out the back door. I went flying. Ever since that big craft game, I've been dining on chicken and wine. I'm a leader in high side of boys ever since I got mine. Ever since I got mine. I went to a turkey feed the other night. Dinner was certainly fine. Fifteen minutes before they started serving, everybody got in line. When they brought those gobblers in, how their eyes began to shine. Talk about a rascal feeling mighty hungry. I got mine, yes I did. Uh-huh, I got mine. Grab that turkey by the wing and out the window I went flying. Almost made it to my hiding place, but it didn't get there on time. Police grabbed me by my coattails, then I got mine. There's a barber shop way across town. It's located up on Water Street. It's the only place on Saturday night where all the gamblers like to meet. Some people just like to have fun. Other people like to scrap. But if you see me and my buddy hanging around there, we mean to shoot some craps. 
Uh-huh. We mean to shoot some craps. Saying seven, eleven, won't you come, come, come? If that seven, eleven don't come, I'm done, done, done. If I see the police before they see me, I'm gonna run, run, run. I'm a leader in high side boys ever since I got mine. Last verse. I went to my best gal's house last night. The hour was just about nine. I wasn't dressed up like Henry Ford, but I was feeling just as fine. I caught her sitting on another guy's lap, and I really didn't like that sign. Talk about a rascal getting in trouble. Oh, I got mine. I got mine, daddy. Oh, oh, I got mine. Grab my hat and out the back door. I sure went flying. That fella had a big shotgun and he knowed how to use it fine. Talk about a fella running for his life. I wound up running for mine. I got mine, daddy. Uh-huh, I got mine. Grab all the money, put it into my pocket. Out the back door, I went flying. Ever since that big crap game, I've been dining on chicken and wine. I'm a leader in high society, boys, ever since I got mine. And that's where the title came from.